It's throwback week here at footballgameplan.com where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you an NFL week four preview between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Cincinnati Bengals. So let's look at some keys to victory for both teams, starting with Cincinnati. Looking at the Bengals, you have to be impressed with the job offensive coordinator Jay Gruden has done with this team. They're explosive. They're scoring points in bunches. They're moving the football all around the field, and they're staying on pace with the running game with Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. Now, where they can improve is getting Muhammad Sanu more involved in the passing game. Continue to open up that offense. They got Hawkins involved. Now you got to get Sanu involved and also get those tight ends involved. The biggest question I have is the offensive line. 12 sacks so far given up this season. That's not going to cut it. That's going to open you up to a lot of turnovers, a lot of bad plays. So they have to improve. Now defensively, when they look at going against the Jaguars, they have to find a way to take away the number one target, i.e. the running game, but also take away the number one target in the passing game. So let's go inside the lab to see how they can do so. So let's show you how the Cincinnati Bengals can take the Jaguars' best wide receiver and bracket him off. When we always talk about bracketing wide receivers, this is what we're talking about. You see right here, we're just gonna give you a half line, tight end, so that way you have the strong safety on this side and the wide receiver you're trying to bracket. Notice the cornerback is on his outside shoulder. That way he had, he know he has help on the interior, whether it be the linebacker or the strong safety. And when we're talking about bracketing, this is what we're talking about. Let's say this guy is, he's, the corner is trying to get the wide receiver to take this inside release toward his help because he knows he has the linebacker right here ready to take a quick stop or, or a cut right here on his interior or the strong safety in case he goes deep. And it's not necessarily doubling, it's just making sure you stay on his interior and on his exterior. If you can do that, you can effectively bracket a wide receiver. And also, let's say he does make this in cut right here. The linebacker in position, if there's a bracket call, can effectively wall off the wide receiver. When we talk about walling off, we talk about making sure this guy does not get inside. So that way, you have this guy getting sandwiched in between the strong safety and the linebacker. And that's how you can effectively bracket a wide receiver. Now let's move over to the Jaguars. You instantly have to start with the defensive side of the football. They cannot get pressure. The only guys that have sacks on this roster are the two D tackles and Alulu and Knighton. These guys on the end, Mincy and also Branch, the rookie out of Clemson, they have to do a better job. Knighton right there, you see, is a force on the interior, but they got to get more production on the outside. Now, I, I am impressed with their secondary. The law offices of Lowry and Landry, those guys do a great job of eliminating mistakes. Rasheen Mathis is a solid corner, so I like what I see out of the secondary. They have to get pass rush to help those guys out. Now, on the offensive side of football, going against the Bengals, I think they have to move the pocket for Blaine Gabbert. And what I'm talking about moving the pocket is getting him outside. So let's go inside the lab to see how the Jags can move the pocket to defeat the pass rush. I think the Jaguars can have some success versus Cincinnati by moving Gabbard around in the pocket. And here's what we're talking about when we're talking about moving the pocket. Let's say we have this regular smash route combination, uh, corner, curl right there. We wanna move the pocket for Gabbard this way to help get the ball to one of these two targets. So this is what you do. You have this tackle, Peeling back and blocking this in right here because everybody has a gap. Everybody has a gap. So you have the center comboing with this guy to keep him off base. This is where this is where the action is right here. This is how we're gonna move the pocket. We're gonna have this guy block down. We're gonna pull him slightly to maintain to pick up this in. We're also gonna roll the back this way. We're gonna give Gabbert that half waggle right there. The back is gonna Peel up, get any backside, get any front side pressure, and we also have the fullback blocking backside, drifting backside as, as well to pick up any guy that the end can't get. So we're just gonna move the pocket a little bit. You have this play side guard, play side tackle, I'm sorry, entertaining the defensive tackle right there as the play side guard pulls out to get the defensive end along with the tailback. So you just move the pocket slightly for Blaine Gap because you don't want him to sit right back there at the spot because guys can come freely rushing. And plus, you don't want to trust that Jaguars weakened offensive line. So move him outside a little bit. Get him on the move because Gabbard is athletic. He can get outside and make some plays with, the leg, with his legs if nothing is there. But you give him an easy target to read. One, two. And if nobody is right there, he can easily take it for a three-yard gain and you live to play another down. But you have to move the pocket for Blaine Gabbard in order to have some success versus Cincinnati. Now let's look at the personnel breakdown in this ball game. The Jaguars have problems on both sides of the line of scrimmage. They gotta get better up front in order to win some ball games. Everywhere else, they're fine. The Bengals, 
I'm still not sold on Ben Jarvis Green Ellis explosiveness, although he is a solid, dependable back. But you can see right here, these are two evenly matched teams, so it should make for a close ball game. I like the Bengals in this ball game. I think right now the Bengals can score points in bunches, and I think that's how they're going to have to win this game. The Jaguars may be able to get some sacks because of the offensive line of the Bengals, but I think it still won't be enough to stop the offense from putting the ball in the end zone. I think the Cincinnati Bengals defense will also do a good job of gaining possessions for their explosive offense. I also want to give a huge shout-out to Bengal fans and Jaguar fan forums for always showing football game plan support.